Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Azam. In this video, I'm really, really excited to be bringing to you the DigiDash version three. Shout out to them for selecting me. It's actually the first exclusive review on YouTube. So I'm looking really, really forward to opening this up, showing you guys exactly what it's about. At a top level, let's run through some of the features. There's a complete standalone Android box. So what that means is on your standard car infotainment screen, you'll be running Android. Android 10, I believe. And basically, so you'll have all your icons, you can download whatever you want from the Play Store, etc. Like I said, it's complete standalone, so you can connect your phone to it. However, it has the ability for taking a 4G SIM card, so it'll have its own internet access. It has built-in GPS, so you can run maps off it directly. It also has wireless Android Auto and wireless CarPlay built in. So that's the link back to the other boxes that we've been reviewing in the past. It's just a supercharged overall box, guys. So a lot of feature-packed stuff that I can do inside. And you know what? Let's, let's just jump into it and show you what's included. Right, guys, so having a look at the box here then, you've obviously got the product on the front. You've got a bit of a blurb on the back showing you some of the key features. Worth pointing out that in order for this to work, you do actually need to have either a wired Apple CarPlay connection or Android Auto, and then you'll be given access to all of these different um, function. So let's have a look at what's inside the box. So the device itself looks a lot more premium than the other boxes that we've looked at or reviewed on the channel so far. Obviously this one does also do the wireless Android Auto and wireless CarPlay connection but because it does a hell of a lot more it's basically like a mini PC or a mini Android operating system running inside this box. So looks really nice and premium, really well finished, a lot of air vents to let the heat out etc. So let's have a look at what's on the back. So you've got a SIM tray so it's worth pointing out that this is a complete standalone unit so it doesn't need your phone in order to operate whereas the other boxes where they're Android Auto wireless or CarPlay wireless still require your phone to connect. This you can literally plug in and leave and operates pretty much as a full standalone. So that's why you've got SIM tray. In case you wanted to put a 4G SIM card in there, then you can connect to the internet straight from the box. You've got your USB-C connection. That's obviously where you'll just put a power cable in and plug it into your normal Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connections. And then you've also got a micro SD card slot if you want to um, increase the storage on there or um, port something across. So I think factory, it's got 60 gigs of storage in there. So you can put all your media, etc. Um, so pretty good stuff. Then on the reverse side, something that's really interesting for those of you that have rear mounted TV screens and Range Rovers, etc., Porsches, blah, blah, blah. What you can do is there's a mini HDMI port you can connect in there and then everything that's being output on the infotainment screen will actually pop out back on the rear screens as well. So think of it as if you're watching Netflix here, then the rear passengers can watch it also. Obviously, guys, it will do video in motion, all of that stuff, but at that point it is actually really only meant for the passengers viewing. So that's the box covered off. Then underneath the packaging you've got a few extra things. So you've got your USB-C to USB-A cable and then if you have got a USB-C port on your car then you've got this little adapter that converts it from USB-C back to USB-A and then a SIM ejection tool. So we're not actually going to be using a SIM card. I'm just simply going to tether it off my mobile phone for this demonstration. But you get the idea. It's got everything you need to get started. So with that said, guys, I'm going to plug this USB cable in on this side. So USB-C and then the USB-A into my Jaguar's port. So we'll just plug the box in here and then see what happens. You can see the DigiDash logo has now popped up. So it's actually going to now boot up the device and let's have a look at what's happening on screen. So you can see how quick that was to boot up, guys. Basically, it's an Android operating system running a CarPlay-style skin. 
So it's a launcher, etc., whatever you want to call it. But basically, you've got your different applications, so messaging, um, CarPlay, we'll touch on that later on. That's effectively how you get your wireless CarPlay and your wireless Android Auto working. You've got Chrome, you've got your phone, etc., so you can make phone calls. Um, you've got Play Store. So remember, I mentioned that you can pretty much install whatever the hell you want when you're using this. Um, that's where you would go in and do that. You can see you've got your Google Assistant, YouTube, Netflix, VLC. These are all preloaded, guys, but like I said, use the Play Store, download everything else that's missing or that you would like to have on top. You might have seen there that as I touch the screen, a little activation bubble comes up and that actually gives you access to these keys at the top here, which pretty much whichever app you're in, if you want to get back out, you press that and you've got your home, you can go back, you can go to an app launcher view. So those of you familiar with Android will know that's how you multitask and switch between. Um, I'll just bring that back up. And it's got a few other things if you want to change the theme. And then finally on the right hand side, if you want to exit the car, that's that's where you'd click it there and it would go back to the, the standard infotainment system. And in fact, let's just do that to show you how that would work. So I've jumped back out and you can see there, it thinks Apple CarPlay is connected, but it's called DigiDash. So I'll just jump back into there and there's my new Launchpad infotainment screen. So first things first, guys, like I said, it is standalone. It does have built-in GPS. It does have built-in um, SIM card compatibility. But for our particular scenario, what we're going to do is just simply find the settings and we are going to tether off my mobile phone. So I've gone into settings. Again, those of you familiar with Android will see this is pretty much exactly the same as what your phones will look like. Um, there's the storage I mentioned, so it's probably got around, well, it's got 50 gigs there, so I'm guessing it's close to 60 gig um, with, without the installation, etc. on there. So first things first, let's connect our internet, give it internet access, just so we can get up and running and show you guys some of the cool things. So as I'm doing this, one of the things I'm hoping that's clearly visible is how responsive this is. I'm quickly going to enter the password and then we'll transition to the next bit. Right, so now the password's in, we're just going to press done and it's connected and it's now got internet access. So to get back out to the home screen, I can either press back, but you'll see I'm then stuck at that point. So what I'll do is press that and go to the home. Right, so what I really like is in a few seconds, you'll see that will completely disappear. So if you're in an app, you can enjoy the app full screen, but as and when you need to jump around, you press anywhere on the screen and then you can jump back out to the home. Right, let's have a quick look at some of the apps, etc., that you can do and just the power behind this really, to be honest. Off screen, I've already gone in and entered my passwords wherever I needed to. So that should hopefully make this be as smooth as possible for a video. So the Play Store, I know I harped on about this a little bit, but Basically, you can see I've opened it up there. Again, the keyboard's super responsive. If this does get in your way, guys, you can actually drag it around. So it's very similar to the accessibility controls that you have on your phones, etc. So you can move it wherever you feel most comfortable. Let's just download, I don't know, something simple. I'm just gonna download a game. Let's see what happens. Press search. There's the game. Let's see, so again, I'm just really, really impressed with A, how quick this thing is, and B, how responsive it is in terms of like where you're pressing is exactly where it works. And it's just very quick. I'll zoom in the camera a little bit just to give you guys a better angle. So press play. All right, so this is probably something that's, that's cool and good for the kids really, like if they're really bored and I don't know, you haven't got a, um, phone etc but again look it's it shows you how smooth everything's running really nice and crisp and again if you've got oops died there but again if you've got a more modern screen etc it'll just look that even a little bit more better so it's running android 10 guys and i'll show you exactly how we jump out of it oh in a second i'm as you can see i've not played games in a long while but pressing the little button down there i'm going to go back to my home screen and you can see there in fact there's the game that we downloaded over on the right hand side apologies for the glare it's the only the reason it's the most reasonable angle i can um, film this at but you can see you've got your ways you've got um netflix etc in fact let's just go into netflix show you guys how that works so again i've signed in off camera 
but basically it's the same Netflix that you're used to using on your phone and you can see it's got your different stuff up here as we're going through it and you can just pretty much select whatever it is that you want so if I just go back and just carry on this episode of The Office it's going to load that up so remember guys what I said it has got a HDMI out so you can see there's Dwight messing around on the on the ball but basically full controls from your steering wheel control the volume you get one of these no thank you do you even know what this is it is a fitness orb and it has completely changed right, my so life I'm just gonna pause Forget that for everything. a second but you can see you've got all your play controls down here if you want to skip forward etc you can do all of that stuff and basically it's it's fantastic guys like honestly no complaints it's working super fast some of the other things you can do guys is I've shown you the Netflix shown you temple run we'll just show you something basic like the Google Maps so we'll just go into that so you can see that's that's loaded up so it's exactly how you would use it anywhere else um, you can put in a destination and it will route you so really good stuff it, uh, like I said it's got inbuilt GPS so that works fantastic as well um, what I'm going to do now is just quickly jump back out to the home screen it is a YouTube video guys so we obviously have to go and watch a YouTube video what I'll do is so I don't know let's just search again just pay attention to how responsive everything is Right, so even if you're scrolling, it's like really, really good. See, you've got your adverts annoyingly, just like you would do on your phone. You can see, right, so you've got your video there. So yeah, there you go, you've got YouTube running on there as well. So again, jump back out, jump back out to your home screen. It's really, really good, guys. Um, one thing I did say is you can obviously put in your own storage or you can download your own videos. That's where you then use VLC to run your local media as well. Like I said, this is primarily aimed for when you're driving for the passengers, um, but if you're parked up, etc., then no problem the driver using this as well. You've got Chrome, which obviously you can see all these different stuff up here. So news update on Boris Johnson etc don't really want to know about that anymore but you get the idea so you can go to Chrome and then you could go to I don't know something like um, the BBC news website and it's basically yeah if you really want so you get the idea anything you could pretty pretty much want to stream you could do that um, if you wanted to use iPlayer it's as simple as, as I showed you go into the Play Store search for iPlayer download it log into it and that's it you'll be you'll be using that so really really cool stuff and I mean because you can download different apps I would say it's pretty endless what you could do with it if you had a sports car and you wanted to see different gauges etc up there download the relevant app if you've got an OBD connector plug that in and I'm sure you could pretty much see gauges running on here one of the other cool things that this digi dash box has is the ability to use split screen so really good if you need to focus on the sat nav while you're driving and then the passengers etc need to have something else so let's just say for example you're going to netflix i'm just gonna find something random to play probably just go for the same thing again just keep that playing and what you're able to do is using using the home screen up there and I'm just going to drop the audio down for a second but using the navigation bar up there you can basically I'll click this one which is split screen and then you can choose what you want there so I'm just going to put a sat nav there and you can see basically there you go you've got a side by side so a passenger can be watching something whilst you're busy driving around and yeah it's it's pretty cool stuff it's pretty much just like how it is in Android so you can make it a bit smaller Etc. You can get rid of it. So again, guys, it's just showing you some of the versatility behind Digi Dash, and it's again a really, really well thought out system. So I'm just going to go back out to the home screen. 
So guys, the last bit to show you is actually around the CarPlay application that DigiDash has. Like I mentioned, this is actually wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. So what I'm gonna show you is how we connect the wireless Android Auto using the phones that I've got available to me today. So you go into the CarPlay and you can see down here, you've got a difference of the CarPlay logo and the Android Auto, and it's currently waiting for a device. So first thing we're gonna do is go to the settings on the phone, go to the Bluetooth, and search for a new device. So should pick it up at the bottom when it's quite ready. So we've got DigiDash showing up there. So we'll just pair with that. And it's saying it wants to pair. Just press pair, allow access. And you can see it automatically up there is kicked off Android Auto. And in the background, it's now saying connecting. So let's just see what happens. It's saying to continue, select Android Auto on your car screen. So it's come out for a second. I'm just going to go back into it. And there you go. There you go, right? So it's picked it up. No cables connected. Really seamless integration. And what you can basically do is press continue. I'll jump out there because usually it dives into Google Maps. But you get the idea. It'll have Google Maps there. And you've got your different applications here as well, right? So you can see you've got your Spotify, etc. running here. And you can see you can skip through tracks as, as you usually can. Again, steering wheel controls, etc. work absolutely the way you'd expect them to. And yeah, so that's Spotify running. I've also got the music turned down because I don't want YouTube to go in and mute anything. But I'm just going to jump back out to the home screen, guys. And that pretty much gives you an overview. This process is going to be the same on the CarPlay side as well. You'll connect it by Bluetooth. As long as you go into that app, it'll automatically detect it and then launch wireless CarPlay. But you get the idea. So you've got the best of both worlds, really. What's interesting though, regardless of where you are, once you're connected wirelessly, right, and any phone call, etc., comes through, it'll automatically go into Android Auto or the CarPlay to basically give you a screen that's native and lets you answer phone calls. So what we'll do now is pretty much sum up the video, guys. I hope you found that video useful guys i'm really really impressed with it so far like to be honest it is a premium price tag but then again you're getting a premium product and hopefully that's come across on the video keep an eye on the pinned comment down below i will be posting updates etc as i use it what the long-term reliability is but so far to be perfectly honest with you it's been more reliable than any of the other boxes i put in and you've seen on camera that it's not crashed or anything like that and it actually has been connected first time even ironically the wireless android auto and carplay functionality see that's a add-on function for this it's not what it's supposed to be doing it's not its core feature yeah it does it better than some of the boxes that that's their only purpose right so bear that in mind as well i'll put a link to the product in the description as well and in the comment down below as well so make sure you go check that out if you have got any questions please feel free to ask those of you who've watched my videos before will know i'm very interactive so i actually really really enjoy talking with you guys and um, bouncing ideas back and forth so yeah um, we'll leave it there for now guys. I'm really looking forward to playing with this on long journeys, etc. I think I'll be letting the wife drive a bit more often now. So um, I'll be enjoying my Netflix as we go. So with that said guys, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.